<laughs> What's going on, guys? It's your boy Denny C23 here with a my desire. How you doing, partner? How you feeling? Listen, I'm good. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. You know, the weather is changing. Sweaters and boots, boots and sweaters. It's my time of the year. I'm excited. Listen, man, we got another great show for y'all. Reasonable Doubt, season two, episode four, man. Let's get episode it. Episode four. Listen. First of all, shout outs to the writers for this season. And it's really starting off with a bang. I feel like every episode, they just keep reeling us in, having us at the edge of our seats. Um, and, and this is just crazy because I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it's exceeding whatever those non expectations I had. <laughs> to no, be quite I'm honest. not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. After watching season one, they definitely turned up the fire on season two. Okay. They like definitely did. every episode is something like every episode. So I want to say I love what the writers have done, whatever changes they might have made. It was greatly appreciated and definitely noticed because now I am like, when the next episode, like I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I know for sure. So let's jump in, you know, what I love is that we get to see a little bit more of interaction with the kids this episode, right? And so yeah. we have Spencer um, telling Lewis that, you know, hey, dad, I, uh, you know, he saw something on the on the school's Instagram page and he has a conversation with Spencer and, he, and Spencer's like, yeah, you know, I apply and Lewis is like, really? You know, like, so, I mean, like, this is conflicted with basketball, like, what's going on? And he's like, it's all good. Like, I'm not going to get it anyway. You know, and Lewis goes on to make jokes about wigs and tights and whatnot. And I think that what's beautiful about this is that this is like so realistic. Right. Uh, and we'll talk about how the how it transitions, but it's just realistic. And I think that parents who are watching the scene may have that switch go off on them to think, damn, like, you know, and I, I love, I love my parents. I mean, I, let me get that out the way. Right. But I feel like sometimes parents are dream killers and they don't know it. Like there's a very, there's a very old way of thinking. Like it's not about you chasing your dreams or chasing what brings you happiness, but more so being able to have something that sustains you. Right. And we right. are the generation of like, we're not trying to be miserable just for a paycheck. We want to make something that's doing us happy. We, we want, you know, in this case, Spencer's like, why can't I do both? Why can't I be more than basketball? Right. Um, I agree. I feel like Spencer definitely speaks to how we really are multifaceted beings. You know what I mean? And the way that Lewis came off was definitely old school mentality. Definitely mm -hmm. like trauma response, like bringing it down, passing on generational curses. You know what I mean? Because facts. I when they was initially having this conversation, like I felt the way when he did make the joke about the tights and the wigs and things like that. I mm -hmm. studied theater in school, but that don't mean that I wore tights. I didn't wear tights, but however, that's the what people mind automatically go to. You know what I mean? Right. So the fact that it does conflict with basketball is something that I feel that took a lot of strength. For Spencer to even consider considering that he knows how much basketball means to his father and that's like their bonding type of activity mm -hmm. so for him to feel comfortable enough to be like hey dad this is something that I'm interested in and for Lewis to kind of show up the way that he did initially it wasn't cool with me I was like right. Lewis you know better yeah you, you know I, better absolutely and, and you know obviously Jax is handling Chanel on the case and so Lewis is left to kind of handle this on his own and navigate it and we see him um you know I I would I'm gonna say this is the same day so he gets a call right and Spencer has now gotten in trouble he's he's gotten suspended right he got into a fight right. and so um he makes up the story to his dad about how it was a bully right you know mm -hmm. and he's saying like you know, I just wasn't having it. I told him to leave me alone. But I almost knew instinctively that this was about to be some like, nah, you know, this is about 
the play you know what i mean off rip i i wasn't i felt like the bully kind of like situation was well, did he lie though did no he no he though? didn't lie he said it was it, it was vague but he also did but but i think really coming into and talking about you know like yeah he can never you know because obviously lewis overhears him having a conversation with one of his friends and he's like yeah so shorty you know whoever this dude is can't come at me about that gay shit no more you know and right. even though Lewis was snooping, it's a moment for them to have because the reality of it is, is like, yeah, I wouldn't have taken this so hard had it not come from you. And he explains that like it was right. you that, you know, that I heard, which is so powerful, right? Yeah, because I'm again, expensive. You, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I also think that this is something that a lot of the, um younger the younger kids are uh, being able to have right now is a sense of self and being able to stand up for oneself and i'm super proud of that because i don't think we got that until like our late I, for me personally i'm not gonna hold you probably like going into my 30s because we just you just had a certain kind of way that you were brought up and it was like you don't back talk and all these other things you know what i'm I mean? not gonna lie to you it happened for me around like the age 15, 16, I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. But that's also due to life experiences. So I have to kind of be a little bit more rigid when it comes to setting boundaries. I learned that early on. I didn't understand what I was doing at that time. Like now mm -hmm. that I can put a name to it and actually like emotionally identify with things. But back then, yeah, I definitely was setting boundaries, whether it was verbally or just with my actions. So I appreciate mm. that being feeling comfortable enough to express that to him as well, being that he was the one who initiate initially like downplayed him on what it is his interests were. And the fact yeah. that he said it wasn't his face that I was seeing. I think that part hit me because I'm like, yeah, because he, he said, I'm not going to fight my dad, but I could beat you up. <laughs> like you know what I mean? So it's like that I could beat you up though. That's crazy. I mean, gonna, he, he ain't lying he ain't though. Talk, he, he ain't gonna talk. He ain't gonna talk that gay stuff no more. Yeah, like, yeah. Just, he ain't lying though. I do think that you know, parents. Just you know, again, like for those of you who are watching the show, um, and who are parents, like your words are super powerful. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I won't. I won't go down that hole too much. So nonetheless, you know. He has this moment with his dad where he says, you know, like, listen, you, you hurt me. You know what I mean? It was, it was you that I was fighting out there. And, and you know, like it wasn't, it wasn't him. Obviously it was, you know, um, so he goes on to tell Jax about it. Uh, uh, Jax thought it was cool, honestly, that he was interested in the play, um, which most mothers, you know, I think just supportive overall to say like, Hey, um, uh, you know, give or take, give or take. I mean, give I, or I take, feel, give or take. I, I just you feel, know, I feel Jax, like more. Jax is definitely a progressive woman, and yeah, I think with that, that's why she is more receptive to Spencer being interested in more things, being multifaceted, because it also says like, hey, my son isn't limiting himself. You know, mm -hmm. he's not going to be another statistic you know or, like um, right. at least that's what i'm thinking because like especially from jack's point of view like she's a lawyer she see people day after day who did some crazy stuff probably probably hear some stories about people who did some crazy stuff she's actually right. defending a friend who's doing some crazy stuff so like for, for my son to be indulging in different avenues and not just keeping itself confined i think that's what she really appreciated a lot like that's why she yeah. was trying to take it back. Like, oh, wow. Like, you know? So. Right. To no, that. I totally agree with you. I think that, you know, again, the best thing you can do for your kids is to be supportive as long as they're not harming themselves, harming others, and putting themselves in jeopardy or in harm's way. And so, um, you know, Lewis decides that he wants to do something to make up for what, you know, the little riff that's going on between him and Spencer and he finds this art art school that not only has a great art program, but also has a great basketball program. So we can see that he is, you know, making sure that he has both options here. Right. He presents it to Spencer. Spencer's like, yo, like, man, you know, 
uh Tyler the Creator and so and so performed here last year. Like these, you know, these folks are like nice. this this place is legit. And he's right. excited. And so we get him, you know, to apply and whatnot. Um and we see but later on that was that my thing with that, right, is I do appreciate Lewis taking the initiative on mm -hmm. that. However, I still feel it was it was a little too fast on my part. Just no, I will agree with you. I think that he should have he should finish the school year out and then move right. uh, for the next semester on because I think that you don't get to just, just change your mind and things happen like that overnight. That's not realistic. Right. And um I don't I don't think it is it is for re it is for the like this current semester that they're in, right? If I'm not mistaken. Right. Yes, he said right. so, next week. <laughs> I said next yeah. week. Hold up, hold up, Pops. Yeah, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Like, how did you get to next week? You ju we just had this conversation two days ago. Yeah, that's that's definitely crazy. I do think that he should have finished the school year out and then moved on to the other school because also he said that he wants to be in the play. He didn't necessarily give way to wanting to be fully in that that arts space. You know what I mean? But I like the fact that this school offers both options, so he can be the the basketball player and he could still be the the young man who is a star of the you know the high school play um yeah, so i really I like that and i think that's such a beautiful moment just the from beginning to end as we get to see the conflict and then the resolve you know the conflict right. the having the conversation about it what leads to it and even in spencer asking for space right saying like can we talk about this like later i don't really want to talk about it right now and i think that I love these more moments. or less that it was more or less it looked like he was about to go out somewhere like but he just got suspended so I was confused where he was going yeah he didn't look like he was going out he looked like he was he still in his off. school where so was it the same uh, day yeah I don't I don't think I don't think he was going anywhere I think because he literally he literally was saying yeah I just told my dad what he needed to hear it was the same day that he got suspended so he was still in his school clothes but I don't think he was going anywhere I think he just needed to let it sink in and, and think about it because okay. he knows his dad enough to know that his dad don't mean him no harm and probably didn't mean to hurt his feelings but nonetheless what you said is what you said and right. we need to have to say, this conversation you, you, you know we, so like you can't move the goalposts for parents man you said what oh you no, said. no 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 yeah he said what he said you know but i think yeah. him at least hearing it that his dad is saying like man i apologize i did not i did not mean to to do that to you or to you know to hurt you in that way and yeah. i i applaud lewis also for recognizing that he thought he was doing better but not realizing that that's something that's kind of like not necessarily innate in us but when you grow up trigger. around certain people yeah because you know he expressed to Jax about his dad and his brother and how he just didn't think he was that guy you know um I think a lot of us think that we're not that person and then something happens and it triggers us and now we are becoming you know the I'm things not, that we didn't want to be. I never claimed to not be that person I'm a better version of that person but I, I I understand I'm a product of my environment I'm a product of my parents I'm a product yeah. of experience you know what I mean so it's like maybe sometimes i can't handle things better but i do reflect like lewis had done and you know it's it's not about necessarily what you did it's how you fix it you know yeah absolutely and, and i think, think it absolutely. showed a lot in that like for me personally and no so yeah i feel agree. about him not referring like talking bringing it over to a jacks first like um I think that yes, he should have because I mean they're in the same household. There are two parents, you know, making the decision. But I do think that I also understand that he got a little carried away with wanting to fix it, you know. Um, but also something that Jack said, you you know, obviously as they're talking in therapy, is just how he wants to be the good guy. And I think that he's stepping out of that space where it's not that he wants to be the good guy, but he wants to make his he wants to right his wrongs and especially the fact that it reminded him so much of his his dad he didn't want to linger in that space too much um so yeah i think that he could have talked over with her and he probably should have rightfully so but in this instance it wasn't harmful to him so well I, you know. well well it wasn't harmful to 
Lewis. It was harmful to Jax, though. When you when she gave her explanation on to why she wanted to be included is because she doesn't want to continue to be the bad guy and the parent. Mm-hmm. Group, you know what I mean? And with that is more or less like you always get a chance to be the savior, to be the hero, to be the cool parent. But and I always have to be the one to either say no to it a lot because you've already said yes. Mm-hmm. Give me the option. But I will say in this instance, I don't think that was the case, though. And I think that for previous situations, Jack should have spoken up on that. But I think in this particular context, it doesn't it doesn't work because she wasn't going to say no. Right. This is a great opportunity for him. She would have said no to next week. Well, probably would have said no. You don't know. We don't know. We don't know what she would have said, to be completely Mm -hmm. honest. You know, and he but also- I also think that she has to cut herself some slack because sometimes I feel like she's making herself the bad guy in in ways that not necessarily. I mean, really, you you're not the bad guy per se. I mean, when when Lewis wasn't living there, you you both you both good and bad, right? So like that's just what the hand is dealt. But with Lewis yeah. around, I think they do need to have different conversations. But they also are starting to be honest with each other now so that was not possible before i think that now that they have a better understanding of each other they can have these kind of conversations where Jax can be the good labeled the good good guy good parent and you know they can just both have a conversation with the kid and and neither one has to be good or bad shit they both can be bad parents right right and that's 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 the thing though like Jax wants a unified front and it wasn't mm-hmm. unified at all. You know what I mean? And I completely understood and respect her reasoning because it's like, as a partner, you're not supposed to be making these life changing decisions, which is a life changing decision mm-hmm. for him to leave his school to go to another school, like within a week. Like, that's crazy. If she, yeah. if he would have spoke to Jax about it, it probably wouldn't have been a week. Or I agree. it could have been a, or it could have been a week. Yeah, we, we don't but I also know. agree that with the kids don't know that they, that it wasn't a unified front either. So, right, right. that's like, why she didn't make it a big deal in front of the kids. She didn't make yeah, it a big deal didn't. at all. Yeah, she, she didn't make it a big deal at all. Right, she just voiced her opinion, and I feel like she was within her rights as his wife to be included in that conversation. Just no, like, I agree with that. I agree. Uh, I, uh, hold up, pause it, please. Uh, I, I gotta put grab my charger. I didn't know I was dying. All right, so let's get into the meat of this episode because we had a lot of flashbacks, and we know that there are a lot of shows that have done flashbacks before, and sometimes they get it right, and sometimes they don't. Thankfully, <laughs> I will say that they got it right. <laughs> they now, got it I'm, right. They definitely got it right. Um, yeah. Uh, whew, oh man. Uh, with these flashbacks, like starting with. I'm going to start with the one where Chanel and JT first met. You know, mm-hmm. it's like they met on the set when she was working. And he was, she worked for a magazine at the time and he was on the centerfold, you know? So, like, mm-hmm. that was dope. That was dope. Like, she was living in her best life, girl boss in it. He come over and just start ruining her life from the beginning. He ain't even, mm-hmm. she didn't even see it coming. I'm saying, like, but I, I, did I think, was I did think he was charming though. I'm not gonna lie. I did not like, think he was charming. The lines were trash. The lines I think, were I think, I think that was that was his and that was my his, response like, would have been the same as hers. Like these lines actually work on women like that they're like this actually works. But go ahead, I digress. Yeah. You, know, you you said these lines actually work. I feel like the lines work for who it worked for because you know you like the person before the lines even come out. Yeah, but she also <laughs> said that football players are all the same, you know, and that she, you know, she's not here for that too. And I like that she did hold her ground until he invited her to the game. Um, and so, so I, did I she just really hold her ground because that was in the same conversation. Well, I think <laughs> that. <laughs> Yeah, I guess technically you're right. She did hold her ground. And I think that, you know, you get curious about something. And and like you said, he was charming. So he was charming to her. She decided that she would, you know, go with it outside of her her norm this this one time. And, 
so we see him talking to her she's in her mode you know she's um getting ready to embark on this i guess journey so to speak and by journey i mean she's getting ready to do this interview right so this is really what it is is that Corey has convinced Jax that she needs to do a primetime interview and they're telling her like they're going to ask her a lot of questions and like the, one of those questions being like have you always loved him have you always been in love with him like you know was it infatuation or was it love and we see these flashbacks starting to happen back and forth back and forth um I don't know I think that what happens for me is as somebody who gets who saw the abuse happening right and then mm -hmm. we get to these flashbacks it's like certain pieces of me were like nah like this is a red flag for me like this this behavior looks crazy to me and so um yeah we do the when they first meet you know when he flies her out now they're in bed together he's being very charming he's very sweet and all these things she's sharing her vulnerable moments with him vulnerable. and um and then we you know and i'll just stick to the flashbacks right we with the flashbacks are just you know the vulnerable moments and then now how you know he one of your favorite parts that you mentioned was like they're at the they're on the bench and he's talking about Oh, why do you have to leave? And she's like, you know, I got a shoot to so, do, you know? So that's a, that's right there. I believe was the beginning of the testing, how much of the manipulation actually sinking. Cause mm -hmm. as we seen them in bed, they being very vulnerable. Then to the way he was talking to her on the bench, it wasn't given. I want you for the rest of my life. It was like, let me play with you a little bit. Mm, and then okay and then all right here here's the ring because i don't want you to be my girlfriend anymore like he right. worded that way on purpose you know what i mean like he chose his yeah. words carefully he you know was it, you're on a park bench drinking a latte bro like who the heck that that's breakup scenery right there okay public place <laughs> you know like I, i'm just saying like breakup I mean, scenery is crazy but i would not have expected a proposal in that moment based off the body language the energy that was like kind of happening but or that could have just been like his no nah, like, i wouldn't have like, either you know what i mean so like mm, it was giving breakup energy to me definitely right. giving a breakup energy let us know man which i think was it giving breakup energy or was it giving like playful banter like because to me it's breakup energy nigga had it on a park bench sipping a latte mm -hmm. talking about I guess I'm gonna do this here. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? You're gonna do what here, bro? Yeah, I think that we also, you know, and as we flashing back and forth, you know, the interviewer is like, but you were quick to give up your job, you know, when you got the ring. And, you know, which is something that as we go through these flashbacks that JT also says to her, right? Which is the night of the retirement party as the interviewer is asking her like, well, when did the abuse start? And we see him sitting down, you right. know scrolling on his you know on his phone and she's telling him like hey i need help you know i've been up with our infant daughter since this morning i had all this put together and rolled out and ready for you before you you even got out of bed and i'm just asking for some help you know i'm not gonna lie the job was unnecessary and i think that people this goes this goes back to like learning how to fight you know saying like it's not like you got a game in the morning is probably not the best thing to do after alcohol has been you know all right. happening so, all night so she she hasn't been hit yet so no i know like, but it, i'm like saying most, though like I, I still feel like it's not that's not something when you're talking about being in a relationship right that's you don't it, it, whether or not you know that this person is going to hit you gotcha. that's a for me what i consider yeah. below the belt jab right it was, it was so, definitely, definitely right so then well, he, he's he, was it though because it's not like he got fired he retired it's different yeah but but you know people who retire whether and as we get to see it could have been that he was forced to retire too because he's in pain he got something going on with him like we right. don't know if that happened during or after or whatever the case is but right. i do think that you know when you do things like that you don't know people's state of mind right and so mm -hmm. he's upset he's on his phone you know he tells her like you know just to he basically just starts kind of cursing her out 
um and then proceeds to show her as she asks him like who who you're on the phone with now, and so, hold on before we get to who he on the phone with it was the you don't got a problem when i pay this mortgage every month i said right oh. Like, but I mean, up, up, brother. you asked her to her job, to... right? Like, this is your you wife. Saying? You took her away from her job. Therefore, you took on that responsibility knowingly. You know what I mean? So you can't mm-hmm. throw that at her face. That was messed up. Yeah. But then to the yeah, I don't think that was necessary either because y'all both live in the same house. Who is going to pay the mortgage? You know, hurt people hurt people. When she made that little jab, I think he had to take a jab back, but he took it too far. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I mean he he does take it too far because he goes on to call her chubby right after he shows her the picture of tits on his phone. Like, yeah, she's 27. Everything is still where it's supposed to be. I should have known you was gonna, you know, you were gonna be that because you were chubby right you know or like after the baby i should have known and then right. proceeds to like really as she's like really like really and then he grabs her and he pushes her into the wall and this is the first moment that she realizes like oh this man is crazy it's crazy you know <laughs> like and, and he will harm me um i think that you know the even though this was a hard episode to watch in some ways, because I feel like these are a lot of questions that uh, domestic abused women and men get um, as far as like, why didn't you leave? Or when you, for, when you saw the first sign and I'm not going to lie, this episode was really powerful because I think Chanel, like, like we discussed, like she really answered. She, she did an amazing job in this interview. What, what are your thoughts? Like what stood out to you as this was happening with the flashbacks included? Did anything particular like, really stand out for you? Uh, with the interview or just flashbacks? Just, or, just in general, years? like the whole right, total so of that space. For me, I felt it was powerful because she wasn't lying. Mm-hmm. Like she was speaking her truth in a way that wasn't belligerent wasn't Mm -hmm. ignorant wasn't like all over the place like she answered the questions she didn't talk around in circles she she did throw a couple shots back at the lady but like for the most part i feel like seeing what we saw and what we witnessed versus how she responded to those questions i feel like she she actually did him some grace she she actually did him grace i feel like she could have went so much harder yeah i agree and, it, and she didn't she kept it cute and she i feel like she knocked it out the park to be completely honest because as we first of all once you would have showed a woman another woman's breast on your phone and then proceeded to slam her into the wall clearly some level of manipulation had to be there for her to stay right you know and as we have seen also like he's not afraid to throw his money in her face he's not afraid to throw her insecurities in her face he's not afraid or ashamed to do any of that stuff which is a token to her as well because it's like she was enduring for their family or for Mm -hmm. whatever her personal reasons were for not leaving you know what i mean and right that, that just shows how strong she truly is versus how everyone's trying to basically portray her in the media like oh she was just a gold digger and this and that she had money right yeah she had a career you know what i mean so it's like why would i give all this away if i didn't truly believe in my marriage if i didn't truly love this man if i didn't truly want this to work you know what i mean and the interviewer was basically pissing me off because I felt like, although, yes, this is your job, but as a woman, especially a black woman, I felt like there was no level of empathy there. Yeah. And I felt like Chanel kept G checking the interviewer because mm-hmm. everything that she rebuttaled back to, the interviewer was like, ooh, ooh, over here contemplating about her situation, what she got right. going on. And she's right. not even being truly present in the moment of the interview. Which right. was which was amazing to me because it's like not only did this woman lay her soul bare in this interview, she also did it in such a way that the interviewer felt stupid for even asking these questions. Right. So yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, uh, I do think that she handled herself very well. She handled herself with grace. And even the moment that you see her get upset, she still handles that well. And just asking questions that really apply to everybody. You've never stayed with somebody a little bit longer than you were supposed to. You know, right. how do you know a bad person is bad? Like you like, like when, right. you know what I mean? These are questions that we all have seen. And I think that the way that she's handled it is just super, just with class, the, even in despite the situation that she's currently in, right? right? And so, of course, the last flashback that we see is the actual murder, the day, the day of the murder with something happening. And right. you see him jt literally choking the life out of her which is something i didn't even con contemplate uh at the beginning of this whole entire season because the way we see it go down right so we right. automatically assume that she actually killed him and we now well, know to and also to back that up is because the way the episode started was like he was running away and right. she just molly whopped him with the trophy but right. in all actuality he was choking her as mm -hmm. we got the actual flashback and it looks like a third party freaking hit him over the head which yeah. is crazy which is definitely crazy and now obviously speculation is that it's adrian which is not far-fetched right? right um given what we you know have seen obviously with him having the affair with her knowing that it started about three months beforehand and yeah. also that he's in debt so there's just a lot that's happening with the Asian character overall that's got me like, this is this is interesting. Again, I don't want them to be too, um, not engulfed, but I just want, I want the storylines to be able to be played all the way out so we're not getting too much, if that, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Right. So, Honestly, I, I love the Chanel. I'm no, sorry. go ahead. I said honestly with this episode, I feel like it was the most consistent of the episodes, though. Mm -hmm. As far as like the way the story progressed, the way there was highs and there was like okay moments. You know what I mean? Like right. it wasn't it wasn't overwhelming to the palate, which I really appreciated. Right. No, I agree with you on that for sure. And so of course, um, of course the interview is is does what it needs to do, right? Like the black women are more empathetic men not so much still rooting for jt but they have something to play with they now know what people are thinking and know how to enter the the um the case you know the trial right. because it's getting ready to start and so i think for me one of the things that also stood out going into uh to jackson and and corey is how chanel actually is talking to um talking to you know um Jax and this is not the first time that that we've seen it um like a but, resentment type of speech right like yeah just just I, the attitude and, and it's very interesting to me but but you know I mean Hey, this is what it is as as of right now. I think Jax has been overprotective of Chanel, as we see. And Corey is like, listen, you know, I've told you once before, like, I'm the lead. I got this. Let me do what it takes to uh, to get us where we need to go. And uh, again, you know, Corey, into, well, Jax intervenes in the interview, stops it when, it when she thinks it's getting to be too much. She tells Chanel, you don't have to go through with it. This and the third, which I, I think is bad advice. Bad and, advice. And she Corey, Corey. Here, like, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, thankfully she comes back out to finish the interview, which was powerful. And um, in the midst of that, she's also having another panic attack. So it's like, girl, what are you doing? Like, focus on you, then focus on other people right now. Let the whole point of this, and I think honestly, she wouldn't keep having these attacks if she just let Corey do his goddamn job. He is the first chair, not you. And he's been making all the right choices thus far in a way that allows people to see Chanel in a different way than what they're currently seeing her as. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. 
uh so to piggyback on the people doing their job right can we shout out daniel okay for sure because daniel is great at what he does like how the heck did he find evan's house He, I mean, well, because he followed Adrian, who's not the brightest and doesn't know he's being followed. But I will say, we got to get my man Dan a more incognito car. Because, like, what was he driving? Was it silver? Like, sir, you stand. Nah, but do you got to think about it. That doesn't stand out. Because he doesn't this drive like, a, bad, a flashy car. It's just a regular run-of-the-mill car. Yeah, he's a little Asian true. boy. You know? It, <laughs> it, no, no, no one's going to think too much about seeing Daniel. You know? Until they see Daniel. You know what I mean? So, like, at, at that point, I feel like it's his car not the problem. But what I can say is that I wasn't expecting Adrian to pop up in the LAX after he got picked up by Evan from the precinct on the last episode. First of all, the fact that this man had a whole vacation is crazy to me. But nonetheless suspicious right because they gotta see what's happening here because this doesn't make any sense to me mm -hmm. but um but yeah your man adrian is just i want to know the real story like what does evan have on adrian yeah well what do they have I on each other because yeah it's, you know like because the way that they we already know he met him through jt so mm -hmm. what was JT into? You know what I mean? Like, it's just opened up so many cans of worms at this point because it's like, right. how did JT get in possession of the money for Evan? And how did Adrian get brought into this to now get it from Chanel? You know what I mean? Like, it's just right. so much that I feel like we still need to uncover a bit more. Yeah. Of, you know? So I um, definitely agree. And of course, you know, the biggest bombshell of, you know, of this episode is the interviewer gets some, gets a piece of paper during the interview from her, uh, you know, from her boss. And she brings up the fact that, so obviously this girl, Tony is pregnant and was, and JT wrote her a check for an abortion. Um, and we find out that this is also the same Tony that Lewis slept with. So I literally wrote down, like, what if this isn't JT's baby, but it's Lewis's baby? Not to mention that as we had the conversation that we she got paid to have the abortion, which she did not do. And right. now she's Trifling. still pregnant. So Trifling. Listen, can y'all put a big T in the bottom if you think she's trifling as I think she's trifling? Because I'm confused as to why he paid her in the first place why did you pay yeah that's why? unbeknownst to me right just for you and why'd you ask for the money if you just was going to keep the baby why? yeah i thought that, that was very interesting but i'm wondering if i, I do want to know what this what happens with this situation for sure and i do think that messy boots and and also like part of me is kind of like hmm Mm -hmm. maybe Lewis should have said something when Jax asked did I know her or, Yo, you know. that's what I was thinking as well because soon as we found out it was the same Tony and it flashed back to Lewis sleeping with Tony after the party or whatever when he met her and Jax asking like so do I know her fuck her like you fuck me Fuck me like you fucked her right. type situation. Yeah. Like it would have been a completely different ball game if Jax had known who it was. Or at least she wouldn't have been blindsided when she does get the news. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. So we, I, listen, this is a cliffhanger for sure. Who killed JT, right? This number one cliffhanger. And whose baby is Tony? Listen, these are some <laughs> crazy ass cliffhangers. And right. whose baby is Tony carrying? Uh, right. Okay, so. Let me know, man. Who? Let us know in the comments. Let, let us know what you think about the season so far. What episode are you rocking with the best? And what do you think about Chanel? Like, is what, you know, what is happening with your girl? Is your girl got issues? I'm not going to lie. Your girl got some issues. Even though I'm rooting for her to nah, get off because it doesn't got, seem like she's actually guilty, but she got some issues. She got crazy eyes. 
I was about to say, I know what she's exactly what she, she was doing. Crazy, crazy eyes, I'm man. Done with she, she, she got crazy eyes. And the thing is, though, she only give these eyes to Jax. And that is crazy to me. Because with when Corey talks to her, when Corey talks to her, she's just so soft and smitten. Quiet, mm-hmm. even. When Jack's talking, she like no. bucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's definitely bucking. So. And trying to take shots. And I, I really loved the part where Jax was like, deflection isn't cool. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, deflection does not help you in this situation at all. Like, I'm your lawyer. I can only do my job if you give me the right information. And I like how she doubled down on that instead of uh, popping back. Yeah, I agree. But so anyway, let us know what you think. Let us know your thoughts, how you feel, what's going on, and how is the season going to continue, y'all? We cannot wait. Super, super excited. Until next time, you know where to find us here at Big Go Media. All right? Peace.